Thank you all for joining us on our Wednesday webinar series. My name is Helene Castletine. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Indian River County Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we, you are in for a treat today. We have Morgan Reynolds, who is the owner and captain of Beyond the Trend Marketing. So yay. And um, so what we're going to do is we do every session is you can type in your questions and John Carapi, who is my colleague, he's our business retention manager here at the chamber. John will moderate the session and read your questions off to Morgan as we go along. Um, it is only 30 minutes, so you know it'll be, it'll be quick, but I think it's going to be jam packed with some really, really good information. So you, like I say, you're in for a treat. And as every session, these are recorded. So um, I'm not sure it'll be today. I'm kind of on vacation. But this week, we will upload um, the, uh, the audio to the economic development website, IndianRiverED.com, along with any kind of um, materials that uh, Morgan will share with us today. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to John and to Morgan. And I'm going to mute myself and turn my camera off. So enjoy. All right. Good deal. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, we'll take questions uh, you know, towards the end. We'll get about 20 minutes in, 15, 20 minutes, and we'll take questions. So again, you can chat in the chat, um, chat or you can put them in the Q&A, either one, if you don't want to know, if you don't want to be, um, know you're asking a question. So um, take it away, Morgan. Let's do it. Awesome. Great. Okay, so everyone bear with me. I do not often use PowerPoint. We're going to do the best we can here, but I really appreciate everyone taking time out of their day. I'll be available at all the contact information listed at the bottom of this slide if you have further follow up questions, but I'm going to try and just fly through the general concepts today um, because I know our time is precious. So what I'm going to talk about today is marketing in the time of COVID specifically. So not digital marketing in general or marketing pre-COVID, but ideas, tools, and tactics that pertain particularly to this particular season that we're in. So today we're going to talk about the tone to use in your marketing right now, the tools that are available to you, and also targeting your audience, new customers, and current or previous customers. So Tone, respectful. I don't know if you guys saw that coming or not, but your clients, your customers, new customers that haven't found you yet are dealing with a lot. All of a sudden, everyone has become Sheldon. I'm a fan of the Big Bang Theory. I don't know if anyone else is, but the um, people are kind of stressed out right now. And so as business owners, we're stressed and we're carrying a lot too, but it's important for us to kind of be respectful of what our clients and customers are going through as well. So let's talk about that a little bit more here. So the first thing to do in your messaging is to acknowledge the situation that we're in. So for example, just make it really clear what you're trying to communicate. This is a graphic we did for the chamber when they reopened their physical location. Just be clear, be obvious, and acknowledge that things are a little bit different right now, and customers may not know what to expect from businesses, even if they've had a long relationship with you. Some ideas of messaging. I'm going to minimize this video just for now so that you guys can see everything. When you're ready, we're here. That's a message that a lot of travel companies are using right now. We are taking the challenge of COVID-19 seriously and doing everything possible to keep our staff and customers safe, kind of addressing it head on there. Please be patient while we work to make sure your orders are handled and shipped with safety. So if there might be any change or delay in your service because of COVID, it's great to go ahead and get that out there up front and let people know that any business who has to spend a lot of time sanitizing and cleaning surfaces and in between customers and new shipments and things like that, we should all be extra patient with, but just in case your customers aren't feeling patient, it's okay to remind them. We are now open for delivery. Let them know when you have new updates, new services, and let them know what to expect. So come visit us and wear a mask. It's really simple, straight, and to the point. 
Here are some examples of COVID marketing. This is another graphic we did with the chamber um, outlining safety protocol for when people come to visit. This ad I got a kick out of. It got a lot of traction on Twitter. Fencing the perfect COVID-19 sport, masks, gloves, and if anybody gets closer than six feet, you stab them. I mean, it makes sense. Um, now more than ever, this was for Giving Tuesday. This is a graphic that was put out. So as you can see, people are wearing masks, they're using sanitizer, and um, we're acknowledging that this might not be a time when people are super thinking about giving back to charities because they're kind of in self-preservation mode, but more than ever, we're called upon to make a difference. So um, also a quick side note, if you use stock photos and things like that in your marketing regime, a lot of the stock photo galleries are doing a good job of kind of creating content that is relevant to COVID that has images like this. So check your stock galleries, whatever you're using, and you should be able to find some stuff. So this is an example of a, we are opening Facebook post with American Icon Brewery. And what's kind of nice here is they did a special offer to get people excited about coming back. So 50% off to all first responders and hospital staff because they are the real icons. That's kind of nice. Update everything with your respectful and sensitive messaging. Think about your client's time. Make it easy for them to find you and your updates. So that means updating all of your platforms. If you're kind of primarily using Facebook or kind of primarily using emails, think about people that you might not be reaching and think about taking some time to update all of your platforms so they don't have to work harder to find what's happening with your business. Respect their fears. Tell them over and over in every communication what steps you are taking for safety. Um, and respect their changing priorities. Some priorities will be the same as pre-COVID, but heightened. For example, people's need to connect with friends and family, some priorities are new, like needing masks and social distancing. So if you want to do a quick pivot and have masks available, that's a great thing to promote and get out there and kind of an easy way to start the conversation that you're open for business, but taking into account what's happening in our world today. So I'm sorry about this menu. I don't know how to make it go away. So that's what I have to say on tone. So let's talk about Tools, because this is where it starts to get a little bit more fun, for me, at least. Um, tools, you should use them, right? Um, Google Business. I'm a big fan of Google Business. I know there's a lot of different uh, business listing services out there. This isn't the only one. Um, we'll put our little talking heads up here so we can all feel connected. But Google Business has a bunch of new tools for specifically COVID-related stuff. For example, there's COVID support. So if you are a business owner and you have a Google Business page, you can update this section here, and customers can actually donate money straight to your business. Um, they can buy gift cards in advance for services to be used later, or they can just support your organization or your cause to help you stay afloat during tough times. Um, you should be updating your Google business page or any business listing with posts, photos, and COVID-19 specific updates often. You should use your online appointment link option, and you should also add offers or virtual events under the calendar section. So then when people search for you on Google, all these cool things will pop up and they'll see that your business is alive and well. I think especially right now, it's important for customers, clients, people who don't know you yet to know that what they're reading is in real time. So anything that has a date stamp is your friend because we all know that the situation and the rules are changing on a week to week basis. So if I am searching for a restaurant, I want to know, did they post this last week and this is their policy or was this from like three months ago and something has changed since then? So the more you can kind of update things and make it really easy for people to understand, um, the better. So for example, if I searched right here, schedule doctor appointment online, which I did the other day, 
um, if you look down here, our friends at Vero Orthopedics and Neurology, their website mentions schedule appointment online. Which, if you go to your Google Business listing, this is a screenshot from the back end of Google Business, you can update your online appointments right here. So this is kind of a newer feature, and then it'll pop out a little section where you can enter a link. And at Beyond the Trend, we created a special page specifically for this webinar. So if you go to our website, there will be a button that says COVID webinar. You can click on it, and then it will take you to a page that has options for online booking, Zoom calls, phone calls, in-person appointments, all those things. Let's talk about voice search. And if you guys wanna let John know in the comments if any of you are using voice search or if you're in marketing, if your clients are asking for voice search, ours have been. Um, during COVID, smart speakers are getting more use, which is maybe not surprising because people are at home, working from home, furloughed. Uh, they have more time to use their smart speakers. What is surprising is that there's a 55% increase for users between the ages of 18 and 36. That younger demographic had not been using voice speakers as much as the older demographic prior to COVID. But again, a lot of those younger people uh, didn't have school, their work schedules had changed, or they were working from home, or they were out of work. So people have actually been listening to, according to this study, a lot of their news and information via speakers. Kind of interesting. Voice search, we do have some silly videos on our YouTube page about voice search stuff. So if you're bored and looking for some uplifting content, we'll talk more about YouTube content later. You can go check out our channel. Let's talk about voice search options and where they pull their information because this is what matters to business owners. Google Assistant uh, pulls obviously from Google Business Listings. I have an Android phone, it uses Google Assistant. Alexa is Amazon's voice search and it uses Yelp business listings. So if you have a Yelp listing, you're in luck. If you don't have one, maybe go look and claim your business, update it, throw some new photos on there. And then Cortana and Siri, which are window and Apple products use Bing listings and Apple maps. So I know that kind of sounds like a lot and some of our clients do feel overwhelmed by how many places and platforms they should be updating and marketing. But the good news is this, if you update even one of these platforms or listings, then you have the potential to have a larger reach than you did yesterday. So any little thing that you decide to do helps and you don't have to do it all, you can still have a thriving business without covering absolutely everything. These are just all options that can help you broaden your reach. So let's talk about social media, another great tool. Um, social media, use it all and often. People who know me know I love social media for all of the opportunities that it has, um, but it does have some um, shortcomings, which we'll go into a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of different platforms. I know people can also find that overwhelming. For the purpose of this talk, I'm not going to cover them all, but honorable mention goes to YouTube. YouTube watch time is up 15%, 15.3 actually during the COVID pandemic. YouTube ads do allow for local interest-based targeting and cost is relatively low. Also shout out to music streaming services like Pandora and Spotify. Those also have local targeting options, so we won't get into it now, but if that's something you'd ever like to explore or discuss further, happy to chat more about that. But the winner of quarantine is, can you guys guess? Facebook, dun da da, -da. Probably not a huge surprise. Um, let's look at some Facebook numbers together. Mark Zuckerberg is loving this. This is from a post that we did on our website, Facebook by the numbers. So social media engagement overall is up 76% during the pandemic. People are going to social media not only to connect with their friends and loved ones that they feel separated from, but also to get their news and information, to get real-time updates because things are changing so quickly. 
sometimes people feel that social media is a better source of information than a website because they distrust how often that website is updated. Just something we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Collectively, there are over 2 billion Facebook and Instagram users, and 66% of those people log in daily, which is huge. So, use them. <laughs> um, so, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, digital ad ROI, I just thought this meme was funny. Coronavirus was created in a conference room in an ad agency by Purell hand sanitizer. Obviously, not every company has benefited as much as Purell and um, the toilet paper manufacturers during COVID. So if you are feeling like you're in an echo chamber or you're having a hard time reaching your audience, actually running digital ads is a great option. And I'm going to mostly, again, focus on Facebook and Instagram just because we're short on time. But obviously, there are many, many ways to market digitally online if you wanna put a little ad money behind it. Also, let this inform all of your decisions about Facebook and Instagram. Facebook owns Instagram. And the way I look at it is that Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg's firstborn child and heir to the throne. And Instagram is kind of like the foreign exchange student. That's cool and everybody likes, but it's never gonna be the first priority. They basically bought Instagram to alleviate their competition. So just let that kind of inform how you're allocating resources and where you're focusing your time and energy. Historically, Facebook has the cheapest cost per click rate of digital advertising. Um, it has gone up a little bit over the last few years, but has also um, evened out a little bit. Anything between one and two dollars per click for a free ask or offer is pretty good. But let's talk about what uh, affects the cost of ads. Right now it's election year, so candidates are dumping so much money into social media platforms as well as everywhere else. So supply and demand, this can make the cost of ad space go up. However, we are all in luck because the uh, strike of uh, corporations in July on Facebook actually made the ad cost go back down. So um, if you haven't heard, a lot of large corporations pulled all of their ad dollars from uh, Facebook and by association Instagram for the month of July because of social protests. So that is tough on Facebook, but a good opportunity for small business owners if you're interested in running some Facebook ads. So. You can build ad equity now. You can use your Facebook and Instagram ads to drive traffic to your website or landing page. You can then track that traffic using a pixel, Google Analytics, and cookies. Then you can retarget that traffic later. So right now, kind of immediately post-strike is a great time to spend money on ads, gather some data, and then hopefully leverage that data into um, a higher ROI down the road. Cool, awesome. Use a Facebook pixel, yes, it is great. Let's talk about Facebook and Instagram shops. And John, I don't know if you wanna give me like a seven minute warning or something like that when I'm wrapping up here. Yeah, I can do that, uh, okay. So Facebook and Instagram shops, this is a relatively new feature that Facebook and Instagram just rolled out. I know there's been some beta testing for a while, but they're doing a big push that now it's live, it's operational. This can be a great first step for people who are interested in e-commerce. And this is just a little bit of how it looks on a phone. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pros, it's free to set up, always great. It's integrated with your existing social media pages and it creates a seamless experience for your customer from social to shop. But the cons are you have less control. You don't own Facebook. Um, you can only do so much with the branding. And um, ultimately, Facebook kind of decides what's trending in terms of the algorithm and things like that. 
Likes and reviews can influence visitors. So this is one more place where you'll need to really monitor and work for great reviews and likes because it's immediately connected to your shop versus your own e-commerce platform. Um, and there is limited space and it is only currently for tangible products. So something to keep in mind, but maybe a great first option for someone out there. So let's talk about your website. The greatest tool of them all, um, I'm sure a lot of the other marketers in the chat will agree. Who doesn't love a good website? Your website is the hub. So while all social media platforms are great and I love them, your website is where you have the most control over your brand, your content, and your interaction with your customers. Also, I'll just throw out there that occasionally a social media platform will um, get bought out, it will go under, bankrupt, or um, change what they feel is appropriate and popular and can sometimes flag your account, even if you've done nothing wrong. Your website, you control, you own it. It's very hard to um, lose control of your own personal website. So just something to keep in mind. If you aren't making use of it, let's change that. So your site should be, here's our website and what's happening on it currently. It should be mobile friendly. What is the layout and buying process on your phone? Have you checked it lately? So pretty much any, uh, New website built will be mobile friendly in terms of fit, but you need to also think about the experience if somebody's using it on their phone versus on a desktop. Your site should also have a COVID update of some kind that acknowledges the situation, makes it obvious and easy. Even if your services haven't changed recently, search engines and consumer behavior may have, so it's worth taking a second look at your website. Um, you could add a chat bot, have a way for customers to sign up via email or text. I'm trying to fly through because I really want to leave time for questions. And that is the end of tools. Let's talk about targeting. Um, you can target your existing customers with email lists and texts. I think right now people are looking for information. Nobody is mad about you reaching out and just checking in, offering them something, welcoming them to come back to your business. Oh, I know you can also use your email and text lists for Facebook ad targeting if you didn't know that and you can use those lists to create lookalike audiences to further target your ads um, use the COVID update feature on Facebook and mark posts with this option use emojis their code is becoming more important for search on Google and Facebook algorithm I know it's not for every brand and everyone but it's not going anywhere. Creator Studio is a great option on Facebook to create and schedule posts, even unpaid newsfeed targeting, which is kind of a newer feature. Wow, it's so exciting. Use stories. Uh, Facebook and Instagram have all their stickers in their stories. For example, this is an example of Coastal Connections Inc. And I added the uh, support small business sticker and the donate option. So, that's one way to use a story. You can also, in this one, I did the Pilato Cafe. And um, if business owners have it set up, you can mention a business and have a little preview of your goods and wares. So get your employees and friends to tag you in some stories and um, make good use of those. So before we go, just to review, think about your tone. There's a lot of free tools available and find creative ways to start targeting and reaching out. People are kind of in that adaptive mode right now, and I think everyone's open to kind of new ideas, new products, and new businesses. So um, all these slides will be available for you guys to review. Visit our website. We've got all kinds of fun, helpful information on there. Um, this is a new article we just put up that explains in detail Facebook and Instagram shops and also the donate and tagging features for stories. So if you want the links and how to's, that's all available on our website. So bottom line, we are here to help. That's it. Thank you guys. Nice. Okay. Um, we have a, well, we have a question here. Uh, what are the rules for using photos from online if not coming from a stock source? 
That is a great question. If I would recommend never just Google a photo. I would recommend always using a stock photo or a photo that you have specific permission to use. But if you are in need, then if you go to Google and you go to search images, in the tools section, there's a way to select what level of licensing you want Google to search for. So that way you can make sure that you're not including in your search anything that's a copyright infringement. That's a great question. Nice. On the, on the lookalike audience, um, Morgan, mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to get the, the, the most from it? Is it from email? Is it from cell phone numbers? Is it from name and address? What would be the best way to create a lookalike audience? Um, email is great. Yeah. And then also if you've done some A-B testing, if you run some Facebook ads and you've done some test marketing, yep. then if you have your Pixel installed to your website, you can track who actually came and clicked on your ad and then actually made it to the website. And then okay. you can start retargeting those people and you can build some new lists that way. Nice. As well. All right, cool. All right. So we're getting ready to do some of that stuff. So that's, that's Oh, very exciting. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's yeah. it's a great option. All right. Um, I don't think we have any, any other questions. questions. I think that's it. No. See any Q and A, and we got no more chats. Mm -hmm. And they can also they can always reach out to you, Morgan, too. So all your contact info yes. is there. Again, if you go to the website, we have a page that we created specifically for the COVID webinar. There's a big button right on the home page, and then that has links to all of our kind of COVID related articles and those will have links to Facebook and Google instructions and kind of the actual nitty gritty of how to update some of this stuff and use some of these specific COVID features. Um, and then you can always call email or stop by. We make great coffee here in the 2001 building. So right over on 9th Avenue, come visit us. We have hand sanitizer. And we'll also, and we'll also, if anybody has any, you know, any questions or anything like that, we'll make sure that your information is available and, and uh, any other follow up questions, so we'll get to, we'll follow forward to you as well. And you recommend a chat bot for email sign up. That's also a great question. Um, oh, wow. It depends on your website, where your website is hosted and set up. If you're using something like Wix or Squarespace or WordPress, they should have bot options under plugins or apps. And then also um, take advantage of Google Business now has a live chat feature that you can turn on. So people straight from your Google listing can use chat. Um, and there are some websites that will allow you to put your Facebook chat on your website. So then it's all feeding information to the same place, which is great. Wow. Oh, another question. Any tips on how to give your eyes rest from all the screen time? That is so important. I don't want us to all be blind, myself included. Um, I do use uh, blue light glasses that I just got off of Amazon. They're not expensive. Um, and if I'm doing heavy editing for a while, I'll put those on. You can also just install a blue light blocker in your web browser and turn it on. So that helps with eye fatigue. And then set a timer and I get up our um, studio space doesn't actually have windows because we do like filming and stuff in here. So I'll get up and go take a walk around the building in the sunshine every couple of hours. Uh, just to, yeah, give the eyes a break. That's important. Eye drops. I just use rewetting drops. But um, I know there's some prescription drops out there now. You could maybe ask your eye doctor. So we, um, okay. Well, we have kind of run over, but okay. I mean, Morgan, I, th I think you just skimmed the surface. Yeah. <laughs> it's really very inter introductory on a lot of these topics. I wish we had more time, but um, oh, I would love to chat personally with any and all of you. Yeah, that was incredible. Thank you yeah. so, so I'm sure we'll much. Do Thank you guys so much for having me. This was fun. I'm sure we'll do a follow up and, and, and if anything comes up or as, as you say everything changes from day to day so we'll see you know what happens what changes yeah. forward and we'll we'll, re, we'll re, regroup right and remember everyone who is still on that we are going to upload this to the economic development website indianriveredcom um can't promise it's going to be today but it'll be soon 
maybe the next day or so. Um, so thank you again for uh, spending some time with us. And Morgan, thank you so, so much. It was incredible. Oh, it was my pleasure. You guys are awesome. Have, Have a great afternoon. All right, we'll see y'all next time. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye, Kim. Bye, Anna. Thanks, guys. Bye, Stephanie.